Hello everyone, hope you're having a fantastic Monday so far. Welcome back to the Waiver Wire Show. Your weekly information on one undrafted Pokemon and their potential usage in a draft league format. I'm your host Stromful and I am super excited to start off Season 8 of the Waiver Wire. Well, technically it's Season 4 of the Waiver Wire and even technically it's Season 2 with me. But if you take the amount of Waiver Wire episodes and divide them by my height, you might actually get... And from Pythagoras' weight, we can conclude that this is, in fact, Season 8 of the Waiver Wire, and that George probably will not win this season. We did have some mixed feelings about last season's Waiver Wire. That's still bullshit. Look at this like, Pokémon. It's a bug of water type. It's oh my god. Lane. Oh. Now it evolves. Holy shit, a sea crystal. Something's about to go Shinobu. This is <laughs> what? With four different forms and four different sets of stats, Gorgas becomes very unpredictable for your opponent. Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka A Job, pretty guy. And apparently my show got banned from North Korea? But that is all behind us now and we will kick off this new season of the Waver Wire with a Pokemon I never thought I would be able to cover on the show. This Pokemon is a personal favorite of mine and I have no idea why this was not picked up. So strap up your seat spells because today we're talking about Nidoqueen. Okay, so taking a quick peek at Nidoqueen's stats, we can see that this royalty has a very balanced stat board. There might not be a specific stat that stands out from the rest, but these kinds of all-around good Pokémon are the ones that are the best present that you can get from Santa. With a very respectable bulk and 90 HP, 87 defense and 85 special defense, yours truly will be able to take some hits. And she can retaliate back with either the special or the physical side with a nice base 92 attack or base 75 special attack. Nidoqueen also has a very flexible speed stat at base 76, allowing it to outspeed a majority of the bulkier Pokemon, force wall breakers to run a bunch of speed and even allow it to be a decent scarfer. Her stats can be summarized in one word, and that word is balance. And we're talking Goldilocks levels of f***ing balance right here. Not too busted stats, not too weak stats either, but just the right amount. Now, Nidoqueen does not unfortunately include any bears, which might be a disappointment to some of you. And I have just compared a Pokemon to a child story online. Nidoqueen's typing poison and ground is very unique and allows her to be a very solid fairy check, which is something every team should have in this generation. Ground is also a very necessary type for most teams, since being Volt Switch spammed is no bueno and will leave mental scars that will cost a fortune to deal with in therapy. Offensively, Poisoning Ground is not bad at all. Ground is in fact one of the better offensive typings in the game, and whatever wants to switch in and resist that hit, such as a Flying or a Grass type for example, will catch the fattest Poison Jab or Sludge Wave. Overall, it seems like we're dealing with a very solid Pokémon this week, so figure out some pros probably won't be too hard. So first and foremost is Nidoqueen's ability to fit on so many roles on your team. Do you need a physically defensive check? Well, no problem, we got that. Do you need a speedy physical attacker perhaps? Well, no problem, we got that too. Need a bulky special attacker? Inga problem, vi löser det. As I touched on before, this Pokemon is very versatile and can be very efficient on so many levels. Its move coverage is larger than my big aunt Heidi and amazing coverage on both the physical and the special side. And to add on from the last point, Nidoqueen's ability to set up hazards reliably should be a reason to draft it on its own. You got the bulk, you got the rocks, you got the T-spikes, you got the cool typing, and what really stops you from spreading your joy on the opposing side of the field? Absolutely nothing. Now, you may be thinking that those attacking stats that I showed you before are a bit lackluster, but oh boy, are you mistaking. Nidoqueen does get access to the ability Sheer Force, a ridiculously strong ability that gives you a 30% boost to all your moves with a secondary effect. Apparently Game Freak also decided that Life or Recoil is a secondary effect, so they removed that sh** too. 
Slap on a life orb on your Needle Queen and you got yourself a 30% boost from both the life orb and the sheer force without taking any sort of damage or consequence at all. Which is absolutely broken. Now I can sit here and talk about Needle Queen's pros all day, but obviously the coaches did not think it was worth picking up. So we might need to take a look on the other side of the bracket, aka the cops. Now, Nidoqueen unfortunately suffers from a condition we in Draft League community call the Lacus Reliable Recoverus. A very hard sentence to say, which I had to retake about 4 or 5 times, and a serious problem which hinders the Pokémon's defensive capability a lot. Even though Nidoqueen can be a super solid defensive Pokémon, it will get shipped down pretty easily. The main way you'll be able to get back HP on this Pokémon is via Rest, which is not too great. Sure, you can fit many roles, but it needs to be awake for that. Sleep talk is a thing, but that kind of leads us into the next point. Nidoqueen's wide move pool is amazing, and so amazing that you can't squeeze in every single bit of awesome onto one set. The 4 move slot syndrome is something that you will have to get used to when using this Pokemon. Just like you can't ride your bike indoors, your Pokemon can't learn more than 4 moves at a time. Please someone direct me to the logic, I don't see it. And last but not least is the fact that Nidoqueen has a good amount of competition when it comes to being picked. Being a tier 2 is no piece of cake if you want to get picked in this league. I mean you're up against this IKEA lamp thing. I mean what the f*** is this? Nidoqueen is very expensive which is probably why some coaches decide to lean away from it. But you know I think these cons are okay, I mean we have worked with worse cons, shoutouts to Masquerade. So let's head over to the Pokemon Showdown and see what we can do with our blue friend Nidoqueen. Alright so set number 1 is your generic bulky Nidoqueen set, whose job is to get up those stealth rocks, maybe tank one or two hits, and then dish out some damage with the coverage moves of your choosing. For this set we do have the Earth Power in the Ice Beam, which gets boosted by your nice Sheer Force ability. The coverage is really dependent on the matchup, also you can rock the Physical Nidoqueen set instead, which works just as well. Stealth Rocks are pretty self-explanatory, and the last ace up our sleeves are Toxic Spikes. Probably one of the most annoying things you'll ever have to deal with in Pokemon. Except for Minimize Chansey of course. The EVs are simple max HP, enough speed to outrun a no speed invested base 80 Pokemon such as a Mesprit and the rest in physical bulk. You can just as easily change this to a special defensive set instead or maybe even a mixed defensive variant if you like. The Black Sludge is just for passive recovery, you get that nice 6% every turn which is super super important. Next up we got ourselves the Mixed Wall Breaker who really is a force to be reckoned with. The idea behind this set is really to abuse the hell out of that life orb sheer force combo and pretty much maximize your damage output from both the special and the physical side. It doesn't matter where you put those defensive investments, we can cut butts on both the physical and the special side. That's a sentence I never thought I would say in my life. We've already gone over the Mamoswine coverage in Ice and Ground and why Surskit has his own little niche and viability in draft format. We also do have the physical coverage and poison jab which really will dent all the special walls wanting to switch in. And we also pack a little bit of a surprise for those frail or offensive Pokemon that might want to come in and revenge kill Nidoqueen. Now Sucker Punch might not be sheer force boosted but it still will do some damage. The Eevees might seem a little bit odd at first glance since you know why waste Eevees in a stat if you're hindering with your nature. Well, since Nidoqueen does have that nice natural bulk, it will be able to take at least one neutral or weak super effective hits from most Pokemon and can dish out a ton of damage back. It wouldn't be that much to lower any defenses, which is why I've decided to lower my speed. But just because you're lowering a stat doesn't mean that it is unusable. The speed here is to hit the same benchmark as the last set to outrun a node speed invested base 80 Pokemon. I've decided to maximize attack on this set and put the rest in special attack just you know for general damage. Lastly we do have the fastest Needle Queen in town, rocking that choice scarf. This Pokemon is an excellent revenge killer for weaker Pokemon since its coverage allows it to hit a lot of Pokemon for super effective damage. Now this may not be the strongest choice scarfer out there damage wise but you know this still packs a bit of a punch with the sheer force boost. 
The coverage we have on this set is Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Flamethrower, and Ice Beam, and believe me, there aren't really any type that want to switch into that. The EVs are pretty simple, 236 with a timid nature allows you to outspeed a max speed Mega Low Pony. Maximum special attack allows you for a lot of damage and the rest in HP for overall bulk. And now we're getting into the first build set of the season, and if you're unaware of what a build set is, no worries, I'll just run it by you quickly. Build sets are basically the last set that we showcase here on the show, which is a bit of a more creative set, and sometimes on the margin of being just utter not crazy. This is of course named after my good friend Bill Standish, who is just that. But in celebration of the new GBA season, with new coaches, I decided to invite one of them to explain a very creative way of using Nidoqueen. This set on your screen might not be the weirdest Nidoqueen out there, but it's definitely one of the cooler in the spectrum. So I want to give Jolt, coach of the Kansas City Giraffe Chiefs, a warm welcome to the Wave of Wire show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, this is Jolt from the Token Minorities, for those of you, those of you who might not know me. Uh, so this Nita Queen set is one that I brought back in the GBA D-League back in Week 6 against uh, Randy, HLD Productions, and the Texas Rangers. Uh, so it's a pretty cool set. You can see it in front of you. Uh, the EV spread is also pretty complex, but basically what the Nita Queen was designed to do was to be both a defensive and an offensive threat against his team. Randy's team was really specialized around Tapakoku Halucha as a core, so I wanted to have one one Pokemon that could guarantee deal with both of them at the same time and Nidoqueen was able to do that uh, on this team because of the investment because of the uh, attacks that it decided to bring on it for this for this matchup uh, so specifically the EVs allowed me to survive a plus two acrobatics from Halucha as well as surviving any two hits from Tapu Koko regardless of what they are uh, the only exception being a Z Nature's Madness into a hidden power that'd be the only way the Tapu Koko could knock out this set but I had other mons on this team to deal with that sequence as well so uh, yeah in general Nidoqueen was meant to switch into Tapu Koko and then basically just get off a massive hit against whatever his switch in might be because I am Life Orb and Nidoqueen has enough investment in its special offenses with the life orb uh, to do a lot of damage to anything on his team. Uh, then it was kind of a mixed set here, so Poison Jab with the attack reducing nature is a little bit weird, but uh, that was necessary in my opinion just in case he was a Calm Mind Tapu Koko as well. Uh, that ensures I'm going to be able to beat that 1v1 as Calm Mind uh, Tapu Koko with a Shooka Berry could potentially beat a uh, Mono Earth Power Nidoqueen. Uh, so that was the idea behind that. The speed investment was just there because he had a Mega Scizor, which is the rel relatively the same speed tier as Nidoqueen, so it was a matter of trying to predict how much speed he put on his Mega Scizor and then trying to outspeed that with my investment. Uh, typically in these situations I'll do something like 20 to 24 uh, EV, 20 to 28 EVs I guess at level 50, uh, but in this case I thought he could just uh, justify having more speed investment on the Mega Scizor, so I tried to speed creep that. Uh, so yeah, that's the Nidoqueen set. I'd say I really, really do love this set in general. You know, I've talked about Nidoqueen being versatile and go offensive and defensive during the entire video, which you obviously haven't watched yet, uh, but um, this is basically what, what I'm trying to get to. Nidoqueen can do whatever he wants, and sometimes, which Jolt has proven right here, it can literally do anything in one set, which I found really cool, which, I which is why I wanted to feature it on the show. Um, I really like complex EV spreads as well, it looks beautiful. Um, Shoutouts to you, of course. And, Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is um, that's pretty much going to be it. Thank you, Joel, for coming out to the show. Really hope it goes well for you. Nice win in week one as well. Uh -huh. Thank you. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Wave of Wire show. Now, if you want to be a part of the decision of next week's featured Pokemon, there's a link in the description down below that will guide you to a straw poll. The options for next week are Trevenant, Chansey, Linoon, Smeargle, Dodrio, Dragonite, and Venomoth. If you know any Pokemon that wasn't drafted and want to see it featured on the show, leave them down in the comments below and I will put them on next week's poll. I am super excited to start off the next season of The Wave of Wire and I think it will be a lot of fun. But anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. I've been your host Stromful and I'll see all of you at the same time next week. Goodbye.